I went to um, a New Year's Eve party. I went to just go help set up. Well, helping set up turned into a drink. And then I had two drinks, and then I couldn't drive. And um, so the night progresses, and eventually I pass out. And the next time I woke up, there was a person on top of me. I fought as hard as I could. And I remember in my mind, screaming, no, but I actually don't know if I said it. And in my mind, I was fighting so hard, you know, screaming and screaming, and there was nothing I could do. And then he just got up and left when he was done. I didn't even know what to do. So I called my best friend. I told her what had happened. She told me I had to call my parents. I had to get home. And I remember just being, just feeling the most helpless feeling of, of not having any idea what the consequences of what just happened were going to be. I felt, I think I felt as violated as I possibly could. And I kept saying, I remember I kept saying, he didn't really hurt me. He didn't really hurt me. You know, I didn't really consider myself having been raped. I just knew whatever had happened was horrible. I just, I didn't know how to cope. So um, I just kind of accepted that it, would ha that it had happened and um, put it in a corner and never thought about it or dealt with it again for a long time. About a year, a little over a year later, uh, I got married uh, to a wonderful man. And um, all of a sudden, I found myself in a very different situation. <laughs> and I was all of a sudden in this relationship that was supposed to be intimate and was supposed to be sexual and was supposed to be loving. And um, it just brought back this flood of emotions and feelings I had never dealt with about what had happened that night or my past in general. I started becoming this person that was so not me. I became really, really reclusive. And I haven't thought or dealt with that night for over a year. And so I don't even know what's going on. I don't even know why, you know, my mind is freaking out and my heart is freaking out. I just had no idea the consequences that night would have on my life. I, I just had no concept of what would happen. I had no idea that I would feel like my husband raped me every night. I just... So it began this very, very painful process. It was a good process. I had to start talking about things, and I had to start feeling things. Little by little, it began to get better. And the more we talked, and forgiving the guy was never really that hard for me, actually. Forgiving myself was the whole problem. Forgiving myself was the hard part. Because in the back of my mind, I just, those things kept popping up. The, okay, well, I'm dealing with this, and it's done now. And in the back of my head, I just kept hearing this little voice. But you were drunk. Again. You're a binge drinker. You were drunk again. You. You were there. You chose to be there. You know, these things just would not go away. I was so sick of hearing it, I just decided, okay, so what? So it was my fault. It was my fault. There we go. What are we going to do now? And I just decided, you know what, Lord, I am so sick of hearing this in the back of my head. Will you forgive me for drinking too much that night? Will you forgive me for not making the right choices? And then it was just like, literally, it was instantaneous, this just... I was free. 
I had to look at Christ and what Christ had done on his cross and the burden he had bore for me and realize that my pain was not bigger than that and realize that what had happened to me and my tragedy wasn't bigger than his tragedy. Um, Christ and his death and his resurrection and that cross were bigger than anything I could ever do in my life, were bigger than anything I could ever feel in my life, and were bigger than, than any tragedy that could have ever happened to me or ever will happen to me. And I began to change my thinking and realize that it wasn't all about me <laughs> and it wasn't all about my pain and it wasn't all about what had happened to me. What it was actually about was him and what he had done then and what he was doing every single day. And I just began to choose to think that. And I remember deciding something. I remember thinking about my heart and remembering how broken and hurt and wounded and scarred this world has made my heart. And then I remember thinking, no, that's not what he sees. He doesn't look at me and see this wounded, broken, scarred thing. He doesn't look at me and see a hard heart that I used to have. He doesn't look at me and see this black hole. He looks at me and he sees a lion. He sees the heart of a lion. He looks at me and he sees the glorified Christ. And from then on, my story wasn't even mine anymore. My story wasn't about a tragedy, it was about a victory. It wasn't even my victory, it was his. It hasn't been my life anymore. It's been his. And I honestly don't think there's anything greater.